Today, let's focus our discussion on network planning. I will introduce the various network types in high-performance computing, some key points about InfiniBand, and the core network architecture in HPC known as the Fat Tree architecture, including its design principles. First, let's look at some common network types in HPC. From the diagram, it's clear that the upper layer consists of server devices, which are further divided into compute nodes, acceleration nodes, fat nodes, etc. The middle layer connects these nodes through various networks. The lower end is storage, which, of course, relies on networks to connect with compute and fat nodes. We can broadly categorize the networks into three types. Compute network. This is responsible for interconnecting compute nodes. It includes connections between compute nodes and storage. As the cluster size increases, there is a need to enhance computation speed, which in turn demands higher network bandwidth and lower latency. Storage network. This refers to the internal interconnection network within storage, which is relatively straightforward. It's the interconnectivity between storage nodes. Management network. This is mainly used for managing communications within the HPC system. It has lower requirements for bandwidth and latency, typically referring to IP switches. After discussing network types, let's look at some switch products. The first is the IB switch, which is a core device in HPC. Its full name is InfiniBand switch, characterized by high bandwidth and low latency. Currently, in the mainstream HPC top rankings, Designs using the HPC approach with InfiniBand are predominant. There is only one manufacturer for this, which is Mellanox. Another type is the IP switch, the most familiar switch type. Its bandwidth is relatively high, but it has higher latency compared to IB switches, mainly used in management networks. There are many brands for this, such as Cisco, H3C, Huawei, etc. Lastly, there is the FC switch, which is a storage-specific device. If you are familiar with storage, you'll know that it has very low latency. However, its bandwidth development has been slow, progressing from 8G to 16G and now to 32G, which is currently the highest. This slow development might be a bottleneck for its growth. While latency is its advantage, bandwidth has not increased significantly. In HPC solutions, it may not hold a mainstream position, but it could still be used in some small to medium-sized scenarios. The only brand for this is Brocade. We will mainly introduce a type of network related to computing, focusing on the IB network as the core of computational networks and its various concepts. Let's first discuss the different DRs. Are you familiar with what DR stands for and how its rate is calculated? We have gathered some relevant materials, including a diagram from NVIDIA's documentation. From a timeline perspective, it's clear that the current mainstream rates for interfaces are 200G and 100G. HDR stands for High Data Rate, which consists of four individual links of 50G each, resulting in a total rate. The 100G rate is composed of four links of 25G each, and the 56G rate is made up of four links of 14G each. Currently, 40G and 56G are gradually phasing out, although they are still used in some projects, but they are no longer the mainstream. The mainstream rates are now 100G and 200G. The total link rate is calculated as the rate of a single lane speed multiplied by the number of links. Next, let's look at NVIDIA's Mellanox and its InfiniBand technology roadmap. NVIDIA offers a wide range of products, including Ethernet in addition to IB. Today, we will mainly discuss the IB technology roadmap, which includes four layers and various products. One such product is the network card, with which many are familiar, such as the CX-4, CX-5, and CX-6. The CX-6, for instance, supports HDR 200G networks. Another core product is the Mellanox Quantum series of switches. In addition to network cards and switches, there are also cables, including future NDR and XDR. Also, a chip called Bluefield, my understanding is that both switches and network cards utilize this chip to achieve the necessary rates for interface transmission. There are two types of Bluefield chips, one for EDR, which is a 100G chip, and Bluefield, two for HDR, which is a 200G chip. For example, HDR supports rates from 200 to 400G, and at the base level, it involves a physical chip design of 50G. This is the technology roadmap. Now, let's look at some typical products. 
we can see that there are network cards called HCA cards, switches known as TUR, which connect servers within a rack, and various types of cables. Currently, the main types of network cards are EDR and HDR, including single and dual port 100G cards. The CX-6 mainly supports HDR, while the CX-4 supports EDR. There are both EDR and HDR switches, and they come in two types, manageable and non-manageable. For example, in the market, the 8700 series with 40 ports is managed, while the 8790 is unmanaged. The discussion pertains to cables, specifically those that are 1 to 1 and 1 to 2 types. A 1 to 2 type cable has one end connected to a 200G switch, while the other end can split into two 100G connections, which can be linked to two 100G network cards on a server. For instance, there is an HDR interface with 800 ports. It can support 800 200G connections or 1600 100G connections but this requires the use of a special cable for conversion. A summary has been made regarding the current specifications of switch port numbers. EDR switches come in four specifications, 36 ports, 216 ports, etc. HDR switches, however, only come in two types, 40 and 800 ports. NDR switches can support either 64 ports or a large 2048 port switch. After introducing the product, Let's examine its network configuration. Unlike standard Ethernet switches, which are blocking, the HPC, High Performance Computing, solution requires a non-blocking design. This necessitates some unique designs. There are two typical networking methods in the HPC solution. One is the direct connection, which is relatively straightforward to understand. The switch is directly connected to the server. For large-scale scenarios involving many servers, we can connect them directly through a large switch or connect the large switch to smaller switches, which in turn connect to the servers. This modular design is characterized by convenient management. However, the downside is that the large switch is very expensive. Another architecture is the fat tree design, which is mainly aimed at medium to small scale setups, such as dozens or hundreds of servers. For such scales, there is no need for a large switch, so a fat tree architecture can be adopted. This design is divided into two layers. The lower layer connects to the servers, and the upper layer is used for interconnecting switches. The disadvantage of this design is that the larger the scale, the more switches are required. Planning this network is also a key point that we will focus on today. Let's consider an example where you have 54 servers, each equipped with a 100G InfiniBand network card. If you want to set up an HPC cluster, there are two methods you could use. If you opt for the HDR solution, the smallest switch has 40 ports, and each port can connect to two server network cards. In this case, you would use 27 of the ports with a 1 to 2 splitter cable to connect to all 54 server nodes. If you choose EDR switches, the smallest one has 36 ports, so one switch wouldn't be sufficient. Using two switches would not achieve a non-blocking configuration, so you would need to adopt a fat tree architecture. There's a principle here. The downstream, which connects to the servers, should be less than or equal to the upstream, which connects to the switches above. The number of upstream ports should be less than or equal to the number of ports on the top layer core switch. So, how do you calculate the total number of switches needed? There's a formula, the total number of nodes divided by half the number of connectable nodes per switch. For instance, an EDR switch has 36 ports and can theoretically connect to 36 nodes. Half of that is 18. So for 54 nodes, you divide by 18, which equals 3. Multiply that by 1.5, and you get 4.5, which rounds up to 5 switches. This means you would use 3 switches on the bottom layer and 2 on the top layer to achieve the fat tree network structure. This is a simplified example. Now, let's look at another networking method for 800 HDR nodes. Using the formula above, we can calculate that for 800 nodes, the scale might be quite large. For the HDR parameter architecture, how would we network? First, 800 divided by half the theoretical connectable number per switch, 40 ports can connect to 80 nodes, so half is 40. That gives us 20 switches, and multiplying by 1.5 gives us 30 switches. So, if we use HDR 40 port switches, we would need 30 switches, with 10 on the top layer and 20 on the bottom layer. The top layer is known as the spine switch, and the bottom layer as leaf switches. 
Each leaf switch uses a 1 to 1 to 2 splitter cable to connect with the servers. For the upper layer, switches are interconnected using 200G HDR cables. Another method involves using a large switch to directly connect the servers. However, due to distance constraints, you might use TUR switches to connect smaller switches to the large switch and then to the servers. There's also the older EDR switch option. If you want to network 64 servers with 100G each, an EDR switch has 36 ports and can theoretically connect to 36 nodes. Half of that is 18, so 64 divided by 18 equals 4, and multiplied by 1.5 means you need 6 switches. This is how you would network using this formula, which is quite straightforward. Today, we mainly shared some networking methods and information about IB switches, hoping it will be helpful to everyone. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.